everyone, welcome back to Joe's team. In the last video, link below, you saw how we did the unboxing of the amazing Snap Maker 2. And today we are gonna do the assembly. So here it is, this is everything that we unboxed last week. And this is also a remote video, the remote assembly, because I'm still in Spain for a few more days. Uh, and Juan Luis over there, it's the, my helping hands in London. So let's get started. We have in the center the quick start guide, and it's actually really well done. It's like a magazine with full pictures for everything you need and also all the details of everything that it's included, everything that's included in the box. And then also you can see how pieces are gonna be joining together. So the whole guide is there and that's what we're gonna follow for this assembly today. First, let's review what's on the table and what came in the box. We have the base plate, which you can see there in the middle. At the front, to know what's the front and the back, you can see that at the front says Snapmaker over there. So that's the front of the machine and Juan Luis is at the back of the machine. Then we have this star shape module and the, the star shape uh, plate, that's what's going to be the moving part and that's going to be linked to the Y axis. Then under that we have the five linear modules, all of them they're identical, two will be used for the Y, two will be used for the Z and the last one will be used for the X axis. Behind that, we have all the tools that came with the machine and the screws and so on. Everything super well organized in little boxes, sorry, in little bags with the name. Um, all the tools are there. The only one that I thought came in the box and I mentioned in the last video, but actually didn't come with it, is the one that measures the thickness of your material, which you need to know in order to focus properly the laser cutter. But uh, anyway, uh, well, Almost everyone has one of those at home, and if you don't, you totally should. So that didn't come with the box. Then at the front, on the other side, we have the three different heads. You have the 3D printing head, the laser cutting head, and the CNC carving head. Then there is lots of cables, obviously, that we're going to need to link things together. Then there is the, the tools kind of, for example, for, for the filament roll, yeah. So that is the hook that we're gonna put at the top of the machine to hold the filament roll. And then there are other clamps for, uh, for the CNC machine there. Um, then we have the controller over there. This, this object is the, is the actual well, those, those are converters, sorry. Those little ones are converters. You need two of them. They are gonna convert, the, they have two inputs on one side and one output on the other side. There it is. So one of those is gonna be used to link the two Y axis and the other one, the other converter is gonna be used to link the two Z axis. Then next to it, there is the controller. The controller bar, there it is. The controller is where in the end, everything links together. The set axis, the Y, the X, you have the USB, you have the power, and you have also where you're gonna be linking the, the head and the moving beds. Everything is there. Uh, and then there is some other attachments. Well, under that, it's the power the AC to DC power, there it is. And then we have the, the screen, the touch screen, which is an Android touch screen, five inches, there it is, to control the machine. And some other, some other holders, no? We have the screen holder, there it is, that's the screen holder. And then and we have the, um, the attachments for the Z axis there. There you go. It also comes with some materials to get you started and with a spool of, uh, of PLA, which is the polylactic acid, which is biodegradable, is a great one to start with. That also comes in the pack. 
And here I am again. I thought I appeared for a second uh, before leaving you with Juan Luis for the whole assembly. I'm gonna show you now actually how things will go together because it's important to know that first so that when you're screwing things, they're the right way around and so on. So this is one of the linear modules. This is one of the linear modules. We are gonna place it there. So you need to know a few things. For example, that this is the channel and that has to be aligned that the cable is gonna go on the back side. So the cable of the linear model has to go on the side that you have these holes, these two holes. So that's why the cables go in that direction. And the moving part is at the top because that's gonna be linked to the star shape model. That's one of the first things that we're gonna be doing. Then what else do you see there? You see the places to put the holders for the set axis. So before you put the set axis, you have this bracket holder. They're gonna go there and they're gonna go towards the back side so that you leave the section at the front of the holder. You need it to put the actual linear module there. At the front, actually, we're gonna have the holder of the uh, touch screen. And that as well, you could get it mistaken back to front. So as you see, that is wrong. It has to be with the inclination inwards, that way. So it goes at the right of the base, but it goes inclinated inwards so that you can put the screen and see it properly. And at the back, you are gonna have the converters, the two converters which have the two points in and the one point out. The points in, it's exactly, it goes as just as Juan Luis is showing you now, with the drawing upwards and the one exit towards the back. And you have two of them. Well, I think that's the basics before we actually adventure into screwing everything together. And for that, I'm going to leave you in full screen with Juan Luis so that you can see everything. We start with the screws. There is lots of them, but don't worry, they're all in individual bags, perfectly organized. The ones we're going to use the most is the size 8, and then there is also the size 10 and the size 30. We're going to start with the little feet, this rubber feet. So turn the plate upside down. Take the screwdriver, it's a hex H2.5, there it is. And um, you simply take four of the size 10 screws and voila, that's done. Now, next step. We are gonna take two of the linear models. They're all the same, so just take any two. And the only thing for this, this is the Y axis, is that you need to align the sliders. Make sure they're properly aligned. And there you go. Now we are ready to place the star shaped platform. Make sure that the nuts are facing upwards and that the white center part is in the middle. Place the linear models on top, use the size 8 screws and don't tighten them totally yet. large base plate upside down and place it on top, making sure the side of the slot is the side where the cables are. Then screw the base plate, but this time all the way. Turn around and have a look at the y-axis, the linear models, and make sure that they are accurately mounted onto the grooves of the base plate. Now you can tighten the screws from the sliders in the y-axis. It's a little bit complicated because you have to do it from the bottom and you have to align the platform but it's okay you can just move it until it matches and you can see the screws through the little hole. Next step the z-axis holders. There you are you have two of them and you need to place them also at the back of the base plate and you can screw this all the way. Then also the touch screen holder from the bottom. 
Before attaching the set axis linear modules, take the cable and thread it through the holes of the holders and under the base plate. Attach the linear models, but don't tighten the screws yet. The same at the bottom. Don't tighten them fully. Move back the star-shaped platform to prepare for attaching the horizontal X-axis. Move the sliders from the Z-axis down, all the way possible. And then take the last linear model, with the cable on the right side, where the touch screen holder is. Link the X-axis to the Z-axis slider. Screw them well. Now is when you can tighten well the screws for the set access holder on the side and at the bottom. Now, carefully with both hands, move the X axis upwards to the top. Before attaching the converters, take the cables of both Y axis and thread them from the back and under the base plate through the second slot on the plate. Connect the cables to one of the converters. Ensure that the drawing on the converter is facing upwards. On the other side, plug the Y conversion cable. Pass that cable to the first slot in the best plate from top to bottom. And do the same with the other converter for the Z axis. Then take both conversion cables of the Y and the Z axis back up through the gap under the right Z axis holder. Push the remaining cables under the base plate and use the Velcro cable ties to leave them organized. And now we're gonna attach the controller over the right Z axis. Make sure that the sockets are looking outwards of the machine with the USB and power socket at the bottom. You will be using the size 30 screws, the screw proper. Now we are ready to plug our first cables, the Z axis, the Y and the X. Open the protective dust plugs only for those and ensure the connection is smooth. Turn around and place the touch screen, it's magnetic. Connect the cable to the controller where it reads the screen. It's a USB Type-C. There are two power cables. First, let's take the DC cable and plug it into the power model. Place the model on the right side of the machine and connect the DC cable to the controller. It goes on the last slot at the bottom. Then take the AC power cable and plug it directly into the power model. My snap maker came with a European plug. I don't know if that is going to be the same for everyone. Voila! Here it is, although there are two more small details we could attach already. The filament roll holder and the tool head cable holder. For this you need the size 10 hex socket screws, not the flat ones. Join the filament roll holder tube to the bracket and attach it at the back of the machine to the top of the Z axis on the opposite side of the controller. Do the same with the tool head cable holder but on the other Z axis, the one with the controller. Now yes, I consider the snap maker ready to set up any of the three options you have. The 3D printing, the laser cutter or the CNC card. This is the tool head for the 3D printer and it has this opening here so that you have access directly to fit through the filament if needed or troubleshoot anything. For attaching the tool heads, you will need the size 8 screws. And this is the heated bed for the 3D printer. To attach this, you will need the size 10 screws, this time the flat ones. On top, it goes the magnetic and flexible print sheet. It is flexible so you can pop out your 3D prints easily. Then we have the laser tool head. And look, here is the camera. That takes pictures of the object you want to engrave to position your design accordingly. The laser platform comes in four parts and it's metallic in black with grooves. And then lastly, the CNC carving tool head. Here is where you attach the milling tools and it comes with this wooden platform and you will need the size 10 screw socket, not the flat ones, to attach it. Now, yes, I think I have shown you everything you needed to know to assemble the new Snapmaker 2. Let's have a look at it. 
scary beach. It's beautiful, very sturdy. I really love that it's all metal. You can see the filament holder over here and the cable holder for the two heads. Then we have the controllers and the power module and the touch screen. I really, really can't wait to start making things and show you how it works. So see you next Thursday. Joe, see.